Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to the Cloud and CyberSec Saudi virtual event. We'd like to thank our gold sponsors, Manage Engine, Nintex, and ReSecurity, and also all our speakers and attendees without whose support, this initiative would not have been possible. Without any further ado, I would like to start off with our opening panel session of the day on how you can enable your organization to be accountable in the cloud. Please welcome our speakers for this session, Engineer Abdulaziz al khalif CIO of Dr. Abdul Rahman Al Mishari Hospital. Engineer Abdulaziz is a veteran of 24 years working in the ITC and information management field with 14 years in the healthcare information and technology space. The latest challenges he took over are implementing ER system for his hospitals in various stages of operation. He has worked on the logistics and the architecture of the system delivery that suits the organization's objectives. Uh, welcome, Engineer Abdulaziz. Um, we have next Dr. Abdul Rahman Al Knaifer, uh, CIO King Saud University. He's a digital transformation consultant who's currently serving as the CIO in King Saud University, as well as the CEO of KSU on Company Knowledge Developer. We have engineer Mohammed Ali Shalan, PMO Director at E Enterprise, Omar Qasim Ali Sayi Group, and Director for Digital Transformation Project Management Institute, Saudi Chapter. Uh, Mohammed Shalan is the editor of a book titled Innovative and Agile Contracting for Digital Transformation and Industry 4.0, that was published by IGI Global in 2021. He currently is working as the PMO Director for E-Enterprise, Omar Qasim al Group in Saudi Arabia and volunteering as a Digital Transformation Director for the Saudi chapter of, of Project Management Institute. And last but not the least, our moderator, uh, Karthik, he's the Chief Evangelist at Manage Engine. He has over 20 years of IT experience. Today, he's the Chief Technical Evangelist for Manage Engine and heads the technical research and marketing team for the MENA region. He has hands-on experience in all IT domain, vis-a-vis IT enterprise service management, IT operations management, active directory and identity management and much more. So I would like to hand this over to Karthik so that he can go ahead and have an engaging session with our dear panelists and bring in some insights. Go ahead, Karthik, it's over to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Vinay. Thank you so much for the introduction, and I'm I'm so privileged to have uh, to be part of this virtual event. And my panel looks so good and interesting and knowledgeable with uh, three veterans in in IT field. Uh, a quick introduction before we start this panel. In line with Saudi Arabia's ambitious vision 2030, the cloud computing has seen tremendous growth in the region. The cloud-first, digital-first approach has gained prominence and organizations have to carefully choose the right strategy to stay ahead of the competition. Though the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology, Saudi Arabia, formulated the KSA cloud-first strategy in February 2019, the acceptance and adoption to the cloud is far more etched and quicker than other Western countries that I have come across. So without further ado, Let's deep dive into the aspects of cloud computing. And in this wonderful and knowledgeable um, session panel, we are going to discuss the top cloud migration challenges and how to ensure your cloud service provider meets the expectations in usability, reliability, performance, and security. Let's first start with Dr. Abdul Rahman to understand the um, technology here. Sir, in your experience, what do you think are the top three challenges to cloud migration and how do you think organizations can overcome these challenges? Well, thank you. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. Uh, yes. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really honored to be uh, among uh, your, uh, our esteemed uh, uh, speakers as well. Uh, well, that's a very, uh, a very good question. And, and what you mentioned, I mean, about the cloud first, uh, 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 principle is really important, I mean, nowadays, uh, giving many uh, challenges. So going back about the, uh, 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 your question was about the challenges, right? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, 
so about the ch challenges, if, if you are to move from uh, an on-premise to a uh, cloud, uh, the way I see it, I mean, from uh, being a CIO and, uh, and not really an expert on the cloud uh, itself, uh, but I think the, uh, the integrity of the data is, is one of the things that always uh, on my mind when we move from on-premise to a cloud. So how can you make sure that the databases, especially the large ones, and the ones that you cannot really afford to put a downtime on them, how can you uh, manage their integrity and make sure that they are really uh, up to date when you move them to the cloud? Uh, the mm -hmm. other thing that comes to my mind is the, uh, is the uh, security. Uh, how can you move your uh, digital assets from your on-premise uh, data center to, or maybe from another cloud provider into an, a new one, uh, maintaining a good security where you don't have any data leak, for example, or any breaches, uh, uh, God forbids. Uh, the uh, third thing that, that comes to my mind, uh, especially if you are moving from uh, uh, on-premise, is the refactoring of the data and, and, uh, and your digital assets. And this is really important, I mean, because what you have on-premise not necessarily is, is the best fit when you go to a, a cloud provider. Uh, you might want to do some refactoring and change uh, and do some changes on your digital assets. I think those three are the the most of the things that comes to my mind when we when we move from an on premise to uh, uh, to a cloud provider or uh, or a cloud native uh, environment. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, sir. And in fact, you actually mentioned something about data integrity, security, and refactoring of assets. These are, in my opinion, as well, are biggest challenges that organizations face in other regions as well. And you rightly pointed out um, the factors here, the challenges here. So thank you so much. So my next question here is to uh, engineer Muhammad Ali Shalam. Um, sir, welcome to the panel. And how do you ensure uh, you get the value for your business out of the cloud? So what are your uh, thoughts on this here? Uh, thank you very much actually for, for having me on this panel. And uh, I'm privileged to have my colleagues with me. Uh, so actually, uh, let me give you an exercise or something that we have did as part of the, my role as Digital Transformation Director for the Project Management Institute in uh, Saudi Arabia here, the chapter. For example, uh, we have, uh, we, for two years, we have to set up a kind of digital transformation journey for BMI KSA to enhance collaboration, to enhance uh, uh, activities for volunteers, for members, and to boost the community for the project management. And here, actually, we utilize cloud heavily, actually, we can hear, because first of all, for example, we don't have uh, much funding as big projects like Hume and other projects. So this was one criteria that we built on. So in case, and unless we use cloud, then, of course, we could not uh, handle what we have. But the other thing is was for sustainability and simplicity, for example. We want this criteria as an evaluation criteria for every solution that we do for uh, the BMI Saudi chapter. Why? Because these volunteers are jumping actually on and off. Uh, it's not like we have permanent employees who are working for this. It's just volunteers. So cloud helped us a lot in this. And we were looking in sustainability and simplicity in every solution that we are doing. One more thing actually was the agility and flexibility. How we see cloud as agile and flexible and how we can easily set up the transition for any uh, activity that we are doing or for any platform that we are building. As part actually of these three criteria, we want to build the value for uh, our journey for digital transformation. We have agreed, we have achieved actually a lot of good activities based on the cloud. And within a few months, like one or month, one, two months time, we were setting up an internal email service and collaboration tools with a portal for volunteers. They can handle all the documentation, they can handle uh, their communication. We also we have introduced a collaboration mechanism with all stakeholders, including the sponsors, guests, universities, students, all stakeholders. And this is usually used using tools in the cloud. Similarly, actually, for knowledge sharing, we have built some knowledge sharing tools among to, to share the lessons learned for project, project community and for program community so that, and this was based or totally on cloud tools that we have acquired here and there. 
Uh, additionally, what we did actually, we have a kind of internal project tracking for our internal projects. Because as I told you, actually, we have volunteers who are going on and off. So sometimes we have to track where we are in any task, in any project, so that uh, the next team can continue at any time. Also, we have created our website. So that through this website will enhance the member experience, will enhance the volunteers' experience as well. And the beautiful thing is all these things actually, when we put these criteria of simplicity, of agility, uh, of low cost, of ownership, then the beautiful thing is that uh, all these activities was done by, and the ecosystem that is surrounding was done by volunteers, configured by volunteers without additional uh, overhead. And in here you see actually, today we are proud, for example, that we have more than 200 volunteers coordinated from uh, more than 100 webinars uh, launched. There is a lot of initiatives and all of them are done by volunteers. And here it's all done because we have this kind of services available in the cloud that we can acquire and easily configure uh, based on the setup that we did and the evaluation criteria we do. So I encourage actually everyone to put some kind of criteria for the values he is requiring and how to do this, these values first of all, then to stick to these values and try to find the better solutions in the cloud that will help uh, to serve his purpose. Uh, so this is actually was a kind of example as we are, how we utilize the cloud to get the value that we require based on our agenda and on our KPIs that we have uh, started. Brilliant, sir, brilliant. That was great insights into how you actually handle uh, the cloud movement and the cloud migration. Um, to continue further on this question as to how do you ensure to get value for your business out of the cloud, uh, Dr. Abdul Rahman, can you share your um, thoughts on this as well? Yes, uh, well, I mean, let's go, why would you move to a cloud, uh, a cloud name? first design or why would you move from on-premise data, uh, data center into uh, cloud? I mean, I think the cost is, is the main factor here uh, and the uh, agility where uh, my colleague mentioned uh, prior to this, I think the agility, being uh, agile, being yeah, able to uh, scale out, uh, out of the bloom and uh, scale in uh, if you don't need it. Uh, that factor, uh, it goes hand in hand with the cost so uh, if you scale in something that you didn't need, then you're reducing the cost. Uh, being able to do, uh, especially if you have uh, a resource intensive uh, 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 systems, I think that's the main thing that I look at when, when, when we are uh, trying to gain the most of, of going uh, on, on the cloud. And of course, the availability, I mean, especially, I think even if you are one of the best uh, if you have one a state of art uh, data center, you still uh, will have struggle uh, as opposed to uh, a, a cloud provider where they have a uh, vast majority of, or they have a lot of uh, workforce that work to do uh, dedicated OPEX uh, for that uh, cloud. Uh, my, uh, my humble opinion is that you will not reach, you will strive actually to, to reach that, but you will never reach the level of maturity that they have because that's their business and that's what they do. But on the other hand, well, we are uh, an IT providers. I mean, we, we provide services to the organizations that we work on, uh, we work in. And uh, so taking off this and gaining the most and reducing our OPEX and, uh, and uh, the hazards that goes with it, I think that's what you gain the, what you gain the, the most uh, benefit of going to the uh, cloud. Great, great, thanks Thanks for your insights, sir. Uh, in fact, to, to summarize here, uh, my panelists have un, uh, uh, given us that the input that cost, agility, resiliency, and availability are the major things that you have to look in for when you have to move your business out of the cloud. So moving on to the next question, I will call my uh, esteemed panelist here, Dr. Engineer, uh, Abdul Aziz. Sir, can you just throw lights on how organizations can leverage cloud technology to gain a competitive advantage? Well, I think uh, uh, first I'll thank you for uh, you know having me with you in this panel. Then the other thing is that my colleague have touched on very important uh, you know uh, characteristic of having a cloud. 
Now, uh, being agile is the word of the day for cloud. When we are talking about cloud, we are really looking to be agile to address the uh, the demand of the business or the services that we are uh, providing. So that is the, the most important thing. Now, uh, another point Dr. Bhutman have uh, mentioned that uh, the maturity of uh, those data or those data center or services that will be provided through cloud is much more advanced than any organization will hope to have because they are dedicated. They have dedicated resources, they have dedicated research and development, or if they don't, they have uh, provided a world-class uh, product like uh, Google or Amazon or uh, Agile, uh, sorry, Azure. Uh, so those type of um, characteristic that will make cloud would be uh, in, the, in the next phase is the first choice when we are talking about uh, deploying uh, services uh, from the organization. I think that is the major uh, aspect of um, the cloud and what it's bringing on the table. And it's moving uh, all services to be like a utility. And I think majority of people will like to reduce their risk, their cost, and their effort whenever they are uh, with none of that possible. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And in fact, um, uh, I would actually want to have uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, Engineer Mohammed Ali Shalan's views on this competitive advantage of cloud technology. Can, can you share your views on this, sir? Yeah, actually, what, what I'm talking about for, for this uh, for the cloud technologies. Uh, as organizations, as uh, we have a lot of things that we can benefit out of the uh, cloud. One of the things that, for example, we are doing in, uh, I'm working actually about my work is for real estate uh, company. And in this real estate, actually, we are now trying to feature smart cities because this is a trend and this is what is going on. Uh, as you see, actually, without having this kind of cloud, we will not be able to run a lot of facilities and activities in the smart cities. One thing, so for example, is that we have a kind of interaction between points, how the city, uh, the services for the citizens, for uh, residents in the city, how they will be handling this kind of information, how the smart cars that we are handling and how this information will be transferred from edge computing to any um, uh, kind of computing actually. So there's a lot of uh, computing activities that we are focusing and thinking about as well. This kind of cloud today we is offering some kind related to privacy management. When we are doing certain services, then we are talking about how we find uh, privacy so that no one we can handle the car. For example, if we have a smart car, a smart car moving in the uh, smart city, then how this information will be transferred in a secure manner. And all of these things, as you see, actually, we, can, we, are, we will not be able to build a smart city until we have this kind of services available in the cloud. Similarly, uh, the cost effectiveness actually and scalable infrastructure, as my colleague said actually, this kind of infrastructure is very important because this is this infrastructure, you know, for smart city, you will build a smart city for in a period of 20, 30 years because you will be operating and you will be getting a kind of uh, rev ops where you will have to generate a model how to generate revenues out of your operation. In the traditional model, for example, we were doing uh, normal enhancement or normal master planning and development for lands. And in this, usually it's a two, two three years project where you end up make uh, the major infrastructure, streets, lightning, sewage, everything, then you uh, sell these lands and you are out of the project. But in here, actually, you have a project that will last with you for 20, 30 years because you have to operate this as well. You have to hire multiple contractors. And all of these things actually, when it's not possible, unless you have a robust cloud services, that's coming in every flavor actually. Uh, so this is actually what we are gaining out of the value, out of the, these cloud, because if we don't have this, then it is really, will be very difficult for us to run a smart city, as well to compose uh, and orchestrate between all the vendors who are doing services for this smart city and the citizens and everyone. So it is really important that today, I mean, the cloud platform that we are building and we are researching and doing a lot of activities 
will be very important for us to get a kind of both the organizations and the smart cities that we are doing today and get the value to our customers as well to enhance it as we go. Because it's really, I mean, when we are hiring like 100 or 200 contractors to be uh, working on smart city, operating for a long time, then a lot of things will be coming day by day. And we have to be very flexible. And this is really is helping us uh, out of cloud. Other than this, it will be uh, very difficult to build all these systems that we need in a smart city. Understood, understood. Great inputs, great insights, sir. Thank you so much. And um, all along, we have been talking about the strategy to move towards cloud and things like that. Right now, I would actually want to focus on some technology aspects as well. Um, Engineer Abdul Aziz, uh, with the amount of experience that you have, and I, I'm sure you would have seen almost all the technology trends in the last 20 to 24 years. So the world is moving towards automation and zero touch services. So how, what do you think, or what is in your opinion, how does cloud enable such automation and efficiencies? Well, uh, you could imagine that spinning uh, a server or new servers dedicated for one service or another would be uh, very convenient, very easy to do on the cloud. And uh, having that ability will give us more capability to uh, automate the other aspect. Now, when we say if, if I have one uh, instant or one service running on a cloud, uh, having another instant that is dedicated for another uh, service is convenient next to it. And it will reduce also uh, the service of attack when, I, when I'm uh, you know, deploying it, I'm looking after that security aspect of uh, deploying. Now, automation come uh, easily with this new um, approach from cloud uh, you know, deployment. Uh, the way that being de designed that you could add uh, additional uh, instant, additional uh, you know, power without compromising the security of it. Now, uh, that is one of the major uh, challenges before in all data centers that connecting server to server would be a hassle. Right now within the cloud, it's just a matter of uh, opening that interface from one uh, server and uh, connecting it to another. Now also uh, with this technology of uh, you know, cloud first, a lot of uh, services we see that been uh, converted to be uh, services, uh, you know, instead of a full-fledged product, it's only a service that you could plug it in. So that plug-in will give you all that interface that you need to do the automation. Now, uh, automation come with its own challenges, but of course, having the back-end sorted out for you will really uh, advance the, the, you know, the deployment of any automation that you're looking at. So I think that aspect of the cloud deployment will really uh, enhance uh, in the future uh, you know, the project. The uh, fast to market uh, aspect of uh, deploying any service that require automation. Exactly. The deployment model actually plays a major role in such technology in, in automation. So it could be either function as a service or software as a service. You, you actually made it a right point here, sir. So, um, Dr. Abdul Rahman, um, you being a digital transformation consultant, do you have something to add here? on the automation aspects of moving to the cloud? Well, thank you. Well, I, I think uh, my colleague, uh, engineer Abdelaziz, has touched on yeah, most mm -hmm. of the aspects that I can think of. Uh, mashallah, it was a very comprehensive yeah, answer. Yeah. But it goes around. I don't have anything really to add uh, to that, but it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, I think the, the one that I really comes to my mind, I mean, when I think about it right away is time to market, which is really important, I think, in here. Uh, but, but, but I don't have any further things really to discuss more than what he mentioned already. Okay, okay, thank you so much, sir. So we have now touched upon the major aspects like the strategy to move to the cloud and the technology aspects as well. The most important aspect here is the cost, the costing or the pricing. 
So, Dr. Abdul Rahman, um, is cloud cheaper than on-premise? What is your opinion on this? Can you just throw light on the costing factor here? <laughs> okay, th this is a very important question, and and I really have uh, had uh, uh, previous debates on this with with my colleagues. Is uh -huh. it cheaper, or is it cheaper to stay on your on-premise database? Uh, yeah. but my my humble opinion is that it depends on what type of applications that you have and you, you intend to move uh, to the cloud. Uh, if your uh, applications are normal or average, then I think you're, you're fine to go on the cloud and I think you will reduce the cost uh, tremendously, especially the, the part that goes uh, around the OPEX of the infrastructure. You would not need to worry about the uh, updating the software, or the, the operating systems, uh, anything within the infrastructure. Uh, and that's uh, goes without saying, actually, to anyone that it is cheaper for them uh, to provide it because that's their business, as opposed to us, for example, that we provide this. Uh, there will be a dedicated employee, uh, maybe maybe more than one, to do that specific things, and maybe they uh, they're not optimized well uh, to provide the optimal uh, cost uh, on us. But uh, let me go back to the to the cost segment and when it's cheaper, when it's not. I think it's not cheaper if you have a resource uh, intensive applications. Uh, those type of applications uh, requires uh, for you to scale in and probably uh, requires you to add in more machines or more VMs on the on the cloud. Uh, maybe on this uh, type of uh, of applications, uh, it might be cheaper for you really to stay on premise. Uh, for the normal applications, the way I see it is that it's, it's way cheaper for you to move on. Uh, I think it's worth really considering and really studying what you have uh, in, terms of, uh, uh, in terms of solutions on your infrastructure and really make sure that you, um, uh, you really know what you're going for uh, because uh, you need to do uh, maybe some sort of cost-benefit analysis and see yeah. how much do you pay in here for, with the OPEX that you have with the current employees and, uh, uh, and the resources that you have as opposed if you go there uh, mm -hmm. And what if you need to scale out? Uh, we have one example that that always that uh, always comes to my mind in the university. We have the uh, we're actually running the uh, the universal uh, 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 application uh, for for the universities in the middle uh, region in, in mm -hmm. Saudi. Uh, I think mm -hmm. it's more than ten universities in there. Uh, so what happens is this application we don't need really uh, much of resources. But when it comes around that time in, of the year, which is normally uh, during the summer, where all students apply to the universities, uh, we need to scale out that system. system. And I can tell you easily, it's, it's really hazard when you think about these systems. If you are in a cloud it's a mm -hmm. provider, it's much more easier for you to scale out. Uh, if you feel that the system is really crippling or it's not going well, then you can, uh, you know, in a matter of uh, maybe minutes, you can add more machines and you can scale out. As opposed if you are on premise, it um, would be much more harder for you really to uh, drop in more uh, resources on that. Uh, so uh, just to sum uh, summarize what I've said, uh, I think if you have a resource intensive uh, uh, applications that you are intending to go on the cloud, I think it's worth considering really how much you're gonna pay as opposed to how much you are paying currently on that. Great, great. So before we uh, share our concluding thoughts on this panel, there's a question, interesting question from the audience as well. Uh, I'm just going to put, put this through the panel here. Whoever wants to take it up can take it up. So who in your opinion plays the major contribution in cloud among the major cloud providers in the KSA? Well, I, I think this is uh, very difficult to answer without, uh, you know, pushing like uh, an advertising for those people yeah. that are providing the service. Yeah. But one major aspect that I see that a local provider that have the maturity uh, over time is going to be a better partner for you than somebody that is uh, brand new or doesn't have the support of an international product. So we're hoping that we'll have, uh, you know, Google Cloud availability uh, within the region, inshallah, in the coming period. And we know that uh, other uh, big provider like Amazon is uh, available in nearby Bahrain. 
but for now, I think uh, the major uh, communication company are uh, providing uh, good connectivity. And uh, just to retouch on one of the aspects, is it cheaper to have it on on-prem or uh, on the cloud? Just when you are calculating that cost, please consider the connectivity part of it because that is something usually uh, being overlooked because once you have uh, heavy traffic uh, intensive uh, servers or service, you will, uh, you'll, you will feel the difference uh, between providing accurate uh, bandwidth for your organization or uh, a bigger bandwidth and that cost is uh, brought on on the organization due to the fact that you are moving that server or uh, the data center services outside the premise. And then you have to connect. So, uh, you know, an example of that is an archiving system or a doc, uh, you know, document management system that is really heavy duty on, um, you know, uh, bandwidth. And uh, it will, it will, uh, you know, later on will, will, will impact you and the cost because you have to extend or uh, make that connection to the internet much wider for you to, to consume. Uh, the answer I think uh, was embedded in my- uh, Yeah, my... of course, of course it was there. Yeah, it was very clear. It was very clear, sir. Thank you so much. So I think we, are, uh, we still have a few more minutes left. Um, uh, I just have one last question from the audience here. With digitalization and consideration and services planning to move to the cloud, there is still a gray area of uncertainty on data being breached in terms of confidentiality. How safe is it to secure and provide extra assurity on the leakage prevention? So there's, there's someone who has actually touched upon the uh, data security and data integrity aspects. Uh, is someone interested to take this up? I, I can add just a little about that if you allow yeah, me. Please. Uh, yeah. Just uh, one, one thing that, that comes to my mind. I mean, when, when I uh, when I meet with the, with my security team, is that uh, b b your security strategy for on-premise uh, data center should be totally different than if you go on the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but the business itself, it has no difference. I mean, uh, as a cybersecurity, I mean, I think w whatever they uh, th their usual routines and. Uh, and uh, data pre-checkups pre and vulnerabilities, I mean, it should remain the same, but with a different uh, model that adapts to the uh, cloud. I mean, this is what, uh, how, how I think about it in general. Yeah, exactly, exactly, that's right. So uh, um, I, I think we are running short of time here. So before we conclude, I just wanted to have some final thoughts from the panel here. What are the compelling reasons for companies to adapt to the cloud? Just uh, each can take like 30 seconds to even tell us what are the compelling reasons for companies to adapt to the cloud? We'll start with um, engineer Abdulaziz. Well, I think simplicity and uh, moving toward uh, you know managed service is one of the most complying uh, reason for any organization to move. It's just reducing the complexity and it will uh, give you freedom to innovate and uh, you know, move ahead in, in your digital transformation uh, journey. Great, great. Uh, Engineer Mohammad Ali Shalam, do you have any thoughts on compelling reasons for companies to adapt to the cloud? I, I think it's building the future because currently you have some services that can, cannot be provided unless you are connected to the cloud. So you have to pick and choose which service to come from the cloud and which service to come from your data center in case you have a data center. Great. Uh, Dr. Abdul Rahman, your final thoughts on this? Dr. Abdul Rahman? I think the, the feed is not working, Dr. Abdul Rahman. Oh, yeah. Huh. It's frozen. Frozen. Yeah, it's frozen for Dr. Abdul Rahman, I think. I think we'll just move on to uh, thing unless. Yeah, I see there is some technical issue. Yeah, okay, I think I think he's back on. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, 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 go ahead, sir. <laughs> Thank you. So maybe you'll be the, you'll be the question. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'll repeat the question. So, what are the compelling reasons for companies to adopt to the cloud? Dr. Abdul Rahman, your, your final thoughts on this. I'm, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? I, I, yeah. I got crippled. I mean, yeah. What are the compelling reasons, compelling reasons for companies to adopt to the cloud? Well, that's a very, uh, a very good question and, and a very tough question really to answer. But I think uh, the reasons for, for anyone to move from on-premise to a cloud, uh, it could be the scalability. So the ab ability to scale out and scale in uh, as needed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, fast changes or the agility, which we touched on uh, earlier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, reducing costs, which is, uh, which is very important as well. Uh, and reducing the OPEX and the human re resources and needed for the infrastructure, and that's very important. And I think having uh, a better uh, performance and a better uh, uh, flexibility among your digital assets, I think those are the, maybe the, uh, the most important uh, things that you can gain uh, of being uh, a cloud native uh, IT. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Abdul Aziz, Dr. Abdul Rahman, and Engineer Mohammed Ali Shalan. It's been wonderful hosting you, and thank you for being a part of the panel. I'm so humbled and privileged here. And to summarize, we have touched upon the aspects of cloud migration challenges here, and how organizations have come across or have to overcome these challenges. And we have also touched upon the technology trends like automation and also the costing factor, how does it even impact your decision to move to the cloud? And as uh, engineer Abdul Aziz rightly pointed out, you also have to look into the bandwidth and connectivity factors as well. This is something which we have to throw light on when we have to choose the right service provider for cloud management. Thank you so much panelists here. You are most welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being among you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Abdulaziz. Thank you, Dr. Abdul Rahman. Thank you, Engineer Mohammed. Thank you all of you for making your time uh, to be part of uh, this program. And uh, inshallah, in November, Digital Saudi 2030 physically, we will see you in Riyadh. Uh,